doctrine of the Trinity. So we agreed to do a little discussion on the doctrine of the Trinity, and I figure as someone who believes firmly in the doctrine of the Trinity, I believe it is, in a, it is a biblical truth, which we can find in both the Old and New Testament. First, I'd like to start off by defining my understanding, based on Scripture, what the Trinity is. The Trinity is God himself, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. These three are one God. Now, some people, when they hear that, they say, how can one be three? So, I end up giving, you know, a certain amount of examples. I can say things like, well, we have one universe, but the universe is made of matter, time, and space. Three distinct things make up the one universe. However, some people say, well, you can't really compare God to anything. And I say, that's a fair argument. So then, if we're going to say that we can't compare God to anything, why does it seem strange, then, that we can say God is three yet one? Well, some people say, well, that's impossible. Well, I'd say you're only saying that's impossible because you're comparing uh, things that you know to God and saying, well, if, my, if I'm only one person and I'm only one being, then I therefore cannot be three. Well, if God is a little more than our understanding and is a little bit beyond uh, comparison, then it doesn't seem impossible for him to be a little bit more complex than we happen to be, give him credit for. Now, on logic, rather, it's simply what Scripture reveals about him, and uh, I'm not one to doubt what Scripture says. I think the best example uh, to understand what the Trinity is, is, is from God himself. So let's open up the scriptures and give some kind of understanding of what, what the Trinity uh, as a doctrine states. The Bible says that God created Adam and Eve, man and woman, in his image. He didn't just create man, he created woman, and man and woman relate to each other. They are both made in God's image. When Adam and Eve got married, God declared them one flesh. And the word he used there was echad in Hebrew. Where else can we find the word echad in Hebrew? Well, in the Jewish Shema, I happen to have a Jewish background, the Jewish Shema says this, Shema Israel Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad. There's that word we're looking for. In English, that is translated, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Echad. So the word for one is echad. Now this is a very special word. When Adam and Eve got married, they were one flesh, echad. And God himself says he is an echad. So let's quickly look at what the echad in the Garden of Eden, when Adam and Eve, what, what is that echad? Well, the echad, the one flesh, is two separate persons coming together to be one. And God himself says he is an echad, is a plural unity. A plural unity. Two persons, but together they are one. In the same way, God has declared that he is an echad. He is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Together, they are, rather than Adam and Eve who are together one flesh, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit together are one God. Now, uh, before we start opening up scriptures and proving this to you, I want to show you the earliest occurrence the earliest indication of the Trinity. It's actually uh, right in the first book, the book of Genesis, chapter 1. I believe it is verse number. Let me quickly pull that up. It says something quite curious concerning the nature of God. It says this, and I'm going to post the verse in the chat room. Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, says this. And God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness. Now, there are three plural words in this sentence. God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness. God did not say, Let me make man in my image. Rather, he, des he describes them as plural. And we find this imagery, this plural God, replete throughout Scripture, as I'll discuss next time I come up to the microphone. I will now pass the mic to AVLXX, and I ask him a question, which denomination of Christianity are you if you deny the doctrine of the Trinity? Orthodox Christianity does not deny the Trinity. Go ahead. Uh, well, first of all, we're here to discuss what the Bible means, and I uh, found it interesting to use the 
the idea of the compound unity, the akkad, in Hebrew. Now, I, I would like to know which word would you use if you want to mean uh, a, a singular one. Uh, in fact, if you look at the word echad and you look at the way it's used in Hebrew, uh, in fact, it just it's exactly like uh, our our word one in English. I mean, it can be used in many ways. It does not denote a plurality. That's that's absolutely false. Uh, in fact, let, let's let's look at some examples. Let's see here, Exodus nine seven, and Pharaoh sent, and behold, there was not one of the cattle of the Israelites dead and the heart of Pharaoh was hardened and he did not let the people go 2 Samuel 13.30 and it came to pass while they were in the way that tidings came to Dan Absalom hath slain all the king's son and there is not one of them left are, are these count compound unities Venom do these mean more than one does this mean more than one making up a group of one? It's ridiculous. You're taking a word. In fact, when you count in Hebrew, do you know how you say one when you count? Echad. It means one. Uh, it's used exactly like our English one. You can have a group acting as one or you can have uh, just one single thing. What word would you use instead of echad? I, I, I think that's, that's fallacious uh, and I, I think it's, it's quite misleading and it shows that you've never looked up the word in all its uh, possible meanings and uh, all the way it's used. Uh, in fact, let's look at Ecclesiastes. There is one, parentheses alone, and there is not a second. Yea, he hath neither child nor brother, yet uh, isn't of all his labor, neither is his eye satisfied with riches neither saith he for whom do I labor and bereave my soul of good this is also vanity yea it is a sore travail this is from the King James Version in fact the occurrence of the word echad there uh, can only be meant to, to be the word alone where is the compound unity it seems like you just take a word and because in some cases actually the minority of cases it refers to a collective for instance, I have one baseball team. It's one baseball team, but there are many players. But in the other occurrences, which are the majority, I can go ahead and say that I have only one son, one singular person, one baseball player. Uh, it seems like you just take a word that you, you can try to twist and, and make into anything you want. You have to look up at every occurrence. Show me why that should be a collective. There, there's no reason to show that it's a collective in that verse none whatsoever it just means one it's used exactly like our English word one you're putting connotations behind that word that was never meant to be uh, please tell me what word you'd use in order to show a single single one a singular one um, I, I really have nothing more to say um, please prove your point I yield the mic I guess I said something right, because uh, usually people only get this agitated later in the debate, but uh, I think you missed my point. God said that he made Adam and Eve in his image. God describes himself as an echad, and he describes Adam and Eve as an echad. Now, you clearly admitted that one can refer to a collective unity. That was my point. My point was that not that echad could not refer to an absolute one, Rather, God himself has given us precedence for believing that it is also a plural one, as indicated that he made Adam and Eve in his image and pronounced them an echad, which is the same word God uses to describe himself. So my argument is simply put that we cannot dismiss the possibility of God being a complex unity because there is precedence for it in scripture, which is what you have yourself demonstrated. Uh, and also the scripture itself shows that God is indeed a complex unity of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, which, of course, we're going to discuss uh, right now. Um, now, you did surrender your microphone quite early, uh, but I will use my time uh, that you've given me. Uh, first, I think every, not even I think, I can prove, every time God does something in the scripture, something profound, any kind of dramatic event, all three of the most important events in scripture, the creation, the crucifixion, and the resurrection, all three of the Trinity are...
to uh, acting single-handedly in uh, these events. Uh, allow me to show you. I'm just scrolling down my list. Okay. In Psalm 102, 